Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using constructors in C Sharp classes. Now, a constructor is basically a special method that we can put inside of a C Sharp class, which is going to get called whenever we create an object of that class. So anytime I create an object of a specific class, the constructor method will get called and we can do different things. So I'm going to show you guys how we can leverage that constructor method in order to make it a lot easier for us to create um, objects off of the classes that we create in C Sharp. So down here, um, if you're not following along with the course, I basically created a class over here called book. And I just created this book class and I basically said that the book is going to have a title, an author, and a number of pages. That's kind of all this book is. And then over here in my program.cs in my main method, I created two books. So I created a Harry Potter book and I created a Lord of the Rings book. Now I want to show you guys how we can use a constructor and we're actually going to be able to use a constructor to make it a lot easier for us to create these objects. But before we do that, I just want to give you a introduction to what constructors are and kind of show you what's happening. So over here in my class, I'm actually going to create a method down here. I'm just going to say public book. I'm going to make an open and close parentheses and open and close curly bracket. Now you'll notice that I said public and then I said the name of the class and this is what's called a constructor. So anytime I make a method like this where I'm saying public and then the name of the class, this means that this is going to be the constructor for this class. And like I told you guys before, the constructor is basically a special method inside of our class that's going to get called when we create an object of this class. So let me prove that to you guys. I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to type out console dot right line and I'll make an open and close parentheses. And down here, I'm just going to write creating book. Okay. Very simple. Now over here in my program, in my main method, I'm going to run this. And what you're going to see is every time I create a new book, this line and this line, that is going to get executed. So I'm going to run the program and you'll see over here, it says creating book and creating book. Essentially what's happening is when I come down here and I say new book, what I'm doing here is I'm actually calling that constructor method. So this right here, this line where I'm saying new book, this book is directly linked to this method over here. And again, I'm going to prove this to you. So over here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that this book method, this constructor should accept one parameter. So I'm going to say string name. That's all I'm going to say. And then down here, I'm just going to print out name. So this method is accepting one parameter name. And then down here, we're going to print it out now, over here. You'll notice I'm already getting errors and that's because I didn't include a parameter. So I could come over here and say like Mike, and then down here we could pass another name like John. So now when I run my program, it's going to print out Mike and it's going to print out John because I'm calling that book constructor. Awesome. So not only does this call that constructor, but from here we can also pass parameters into that constructor. And that is extremely powerful. So I'm going to show you guys what we can do with that information. Now let's talk about the code that we have over here. You'll notice that I have a bunch of code here. So when I created this Harry Potter book, it took me four lines of code, right? When I created this book two, this Lord of the Rings book it took me another four lines of code, total of eight, eight lines of code just to create two objects, right? Just to create two books. I had to write out eight lines of code. Not only that, I had to manually type out book one dot title is equal to Harry Potter book one dot author is equal to JK Rowling. Like, that's a huge drag, you know, having to do that every single time we want to create a book is extremely annoying. And imagine if we were, instead of creating two books, we were trying to create 10 or 12 or 20 books, right? It would take forever because we'd have to manually go through and, you know, assign a, a title and an author and a number of pages. So this is a totally valid way to create our object and give it some attributes, but there's actually another way and we can use that constructor to do it. So essentially what I want to do is I want to allow the caller to pass in a title an author and a number of pages into this book constructor. So when they create the book, I want them to be able to tell me what the title is going to be, what the author is going to be and what the number of pages is going to be. That way they can just tell me right away and I can handle it up front 
and I and then I don't have to say like book one dot title is equal to whatever and book one dot author is equal to whatever. So let's see if we can wire that up over here again. This book constructor is going to take in three parameters, and we already saw before that over here we can pass parameters into here, right? So I can pass a parameter into here, and it's going to get passed into that constructor. So I'm going to say that this constructor is going to take three parameters. The first is going to be a string and I'm going to call this a title and this is going to stand for argument title and you guys will see why I'm naming this differently in a second. And then I'm going to make another string. I'm going to call it a author and then I'm going to make an int and I'm going to call it a pages. Now, essentially what's happening is whenever we create a book, we need to pass in the title, the author and the number of pages. And so what I can do now is from inside of this constructor, I can just come down here and I can say title is equal to a title. And basically what I'm saying is this title up here, the title of the object is going to be equal to the title that they passed in. So whenever we create a new book now, we're going to pass in a title and down here, I'm going to say that the title of the object is going to be equal to a title. And so now instead of having to say like book one dot title is equal to whatever, now I can just pass the title in over here and I'll just assign the title from over here. So essentially doing this is the same as saying book one dot title is equal to whatever. It's the same exact thing, um, except I can just do it straight from in here. So what we want to do is do this for each of these attributes. So I can say author is equal to a author. And then we can say pages is equal to a pages. And I just want to point out, um, you can name these whatever you want. So I could even name this title if I wanted, um, or I could name this, you know, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm just using a title because it kind of shows that this is the argument that got passed in and it kind of distinguishes it from the actual attribute of the object, but you can name it whatever you want. All right. So now when we go back over to our program, you notice we're getting errors here and it's basically saying, there's no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter. In other words, hey, you need to pass in all this information now. So what I can do is I can take this information from down here and I can pass it into here. So I can pass in the title Harry Potter. I can pass in the author JK Rowling and then I can pass in the number of pages 400. So instead of having to do that manually, I can just get rid of all this and now we have the same thing. So I'm passing in the title, the author and the number of pages. And then over here in the book, I'm taking those parameters that got passed in and I'm assigning them to the attributes of the object. And that is super cool and super useful. So let's do the same thing for Lord of the Rings. We can copy this, I'll paste this bad boy up here so I can get rid of all of this stuff now. And essentially we have the same exact thing. So we went from having eight lines of code to create these two objects. to now we just have two lines of code, one each, and we're passing in all of these different attributes. So this should actually work. And I'm going to go ahead and prove that to you. So I'm going to say console dot write line, and I'm going to go ahead and just print out like book two dot, I don't know, title. And so you'll see that this attribute got set. So now I can run my program and we get Lord of the Rings. So it's doing exactly the same thing. Now I also want to show you if you want, you can modify any of these values. So I could technically come down here and say book two dot title is equal to the Hobbit. And now this is going to update book two's title. So now when we print it out, it's not going to be Lord of the Rings anymore. It's going to be the Hobbit. So that's kind of how this constructor works. And that constructor is super powerful. It's an amazing way for us to be able to create these objects really quickly. And I also do want to point out that you can have more than one constructor. So I have this constructor book and it takes a title and author and a number of pages. But if I wanted, I could just create another one. So I could say like public book and this could take no parameters and I'd still be able to do this. And so now I can have that and I'll still be able to create a book just by saying book book three is equal to new book. So now I'm able to create the book like this with no parameters, with no arguments, or I can create the book with a bunch of arguments. So you can create as many of these uh, constructors as you want. 
And yeah, that's kind of the basics of constructors. These are very powerful. What you wanna do is just play around with these, right? I mean, as long as you understand what's going on, like this constructor over here is directly related to me saying book over here, then you kind of like have a good understanding of what these are. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you wanna help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.